Hi everyone, I'm Anne Gauthier and welcome to the Carousel Property Expo. Another day, another fun and informative session awaits our property buyers out there. Now, we all dream of the day that we'll be able to purchase our own home. But for some of us, we aren't exactly sure where or how to begin. Whether you're just about to start your home buying journey or perhaps you have already purchased your own property, consider this a helpful guide to your hashtag home goals. Welcome to another exciting session, or should I say our new homeowners edition, where I will be discussing some tips for first time home buyers and cover the basics. Everything you need to know before and after buying your property. I'm very excited to introduce you to a top caliber licensed professional broker and owner of a prestigious brokerage firm. He has been a consistent awardee for more than 15 years in the high end Philippine real estate scenario. He has been Ayala Land Premier's top licensed broker in the Philippines for several consecutive years, and he became a prodigy in the business at an early age. Committed to his chosen field, he is a recipient of the highly recognized Remax Platinum Club Award as one of the best real estate brokers in the Philippines. Right now, he has a team of high caliber power brokers to help him and you move, sell, buy, or lease your property. Let us please all welcome international multi-awarded professional licensed real estate broker of Remax Unlimited, Mr. Julius De La Cruz. Hi, thank you for having me. Hi, Julius. Thank you so much for joining us here today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. And how are you today? I'm good. Thank you very much for asking. We are so excited to hear from you. Now, you. as you know, the journey to owning your own home doesn't end in just simply signing the contract, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's an extensive process from searching for the right location or property type to connecting with the right broker, going to viewings, running the due diligence work. The list can go on and on. And wow, that is why we're just so happy you're here to help us get through this whole journey. So why don't we get started? Let's just start off by going through first the main consideration points one goes through before deciding to buy property. Where does it start? I think it starts with what you have, right? It Financial health, credit score, available cash. Is that right? Yes, that's a very good question. Actually, there are so many considerations when it comes to buying property. Um, right off the bat, we can identify eight very important ones. And most of the time, people normally consider budget and terms of payment as the first uh, thing to, to consider mainly when buying a property. However, I would say that there's something much more important to put on top of the list when you're buying a property. Since this is going to be the most expensive, one of the most expensive purchases in one's life, I would say the most important factor to consider at the top of the list is number one, lifestyle. So you have to think where they usually go to, if you have kids, where would they go to school, what kind of work will be required from you, where, where you're going to be coming home from. Do you have the time, do you, do you have the luxury of travel time to allocate uh, every morning or afternoon? How are you going to pick up the kids after or if you're single? Um, where are your normal daily whereabouts? And say, for example, um, the property type will also be affected as to what entertains you and what bores you. Because, for example, if you own a house, definitely maintenance is going to be a normal part of your day. And if you don't like that, maybe a condo is fit for you. So I would say the first consideration is really the lifestyle. Second would definitely be, of course, the budget and the terms. So normally when you buy a property, you don't really buy it in cash, you usually buy it in terms. So terms is always uh, accompanied with the budget. So when it comes to this particular aspect, you have to understand how much do you want to allocate. It can't be like all in, you know, all savings, 100% go there. No, you can't do that. Um, and there also has to be uh, terms available for you so that you can manage your cash flow based on what is available at the moment. Because you also have different price types because you also have different types of properties available at any different time. 
The third is a uh, key locator. So of course you have to consider um, you can't live in can't live on a rock, can't live in, in a cave. You can have to consider other aspects of uh, living life that are near the area. So educational institutions such as schools, commercial property, commercial institutions such as office or retail. So where do you go to groceries? You know these things. Um, where do you go to work? Medical facilities are also highly important. They have to be accessible from where you're living. Uh, of course, uh, religious institutions are also a, a consideration for you to be able to do this on a weekly or whatever requir is required for any type of religion. And of course, um, other as far as the type of residential community is concerned, you also have to consider the amenities that fit your family. So after that, you also have to consider road networks, which means to say that you have to be near exits or the freeway so that you can go to wherever you need to be, whether you need to be in the city or the airport. This also usually entails choosing between living in the city or living in a nearby, the highly developing suburban area, which is also actually a great choice nowadays, also especially. The next one is size requirements. You have to figure out what you need. If you're single, if you're working in the city, maybe you'll do it a one bedroom or studio unit, about 36, 50 square meters. It doesn't really matter depending on what you need because everything's you know um, easily accessible, especially if you live in a condo, it's five minutes away. Your travel time is the elevator ride, that's it. But if you live in a suburban area, definitely there's some driving needed, but the same amount of money can buy so much more square, square footage. So you can have a, let's say, for example, three bedroom home for the same price, but you need to go through an hour's worth of dry, driving. So these things are supposed to be considered. The next, of course, is the legal aspect or the paperwork. So you have to check the ownership, the title, tax declaration, payments of our arrears, um, whatever the case may be, for property taxes and or association dues or utilities. Sometimes you're inheriting not an asset but a liability because of all of these things. The second to the last one is the maintenance fees, of course, because once you move in, the payments doesn't stop there. You have to maintain the property. So if you're maintaining um, a home, you have to worry about uh, maintenance of the roof, windows, cleaning, mowing the lawn, cleaning the pool. All of these incur charges. It's not free, so you have to be able, right? you have to be ready with those things uh, to keep that in mind when you are deciding to purchase a property. Or conversely, if you want to own a condo and you don't have the time to mow the lawn, have the pool cleaning, have somebody fix the aircon, piping, you know, all of these things, plumbing, electrical problems, um, maybe the buying a condo is perfect because you just have to, you know, live in it and that's it. So the last one is delivery day. So some of the types of properties that you will encounter in the market are pre-selling. So say, for example, if you only consider the budget and you are paying monthly amortization for a property whose payment terms extend within the five, seven years, and the delivery date will happen in five or seven years. That's fine. If for other purposes, yes, that could be okay. But if you're using it, if your intent is to use it in five to seven, five to seven years from today, your lifestyle has already changed it might not be the perfect property for you already. So the delivery date is also important as the aid uh, consideration when you are buying a property. Thank you so much. These are all such helpful points. And I love how you were talking about delivery date because a lot of people are, and lifestyle, because a lot of people are thinking in a pandemic or post-pandemic world, do I live in a house or a condo? There are a lot of, a lot of people will be able to relate to that. Now, let's say I've checked all the marks, identified a lifestyle, my budget, and property type that I want. How do I start the buying process? Okay. First, of course, you have, once you have all of these lined up in your head, so all of those many factors that we discussed a few minutes ago are things that you have to think about. And sometimes when you know somebody's trying to buy a property, you have to think, you have to put the checklist now. Uh, it's very easy to get lost in all of these details. Now, once you've um, sort of made a vague idea of what you want, that's the time you go out into the market. So it's very important that you go out, check online what's available, because what's going to be available for real in the market at any point in time will usually be very different from what you have in your mind. So in, in, in my years of experience, usually you will only find something that's 80% matching to what you have in mind. Because you say, 
you want to have a three bedroom unit, one of the bedrooms is not as big as you want it to be. You know, it's always like that. And 20% will always be customization. So going back to the question, you check online and then you have to do a physical due diligence because due diligence is not just on the uh, legal aspect of uh, buying property. It's also on the physical aspect. You have to go there, check it out, see it, because uh, sometimes the photos, the impression, it might not also be intended to appear differently from what it is, but um, sometimes the interpretation of the photo when you look at it might be different. So it's important to see it. It's a physical, real asset. So check it out and you might drive around the property, see what's around it, and then if you like it, after you've decided that you want this particular lifestyle, you've seen it in Actual, then the next steps are, the next steps will involve essentially checking out the paperwork and the you know legal aspects of buying the property. Okay, so let's say I've seen it physically and checked out the legal aspects. Are there other considerations upon buying a property that you would suggest? Oh yes, um, actually, that's there's a whole lot of more work that will happen after deciding once uh, you own the property. Just to give you a quick idea of how this goes, you know, during the first three months, this is fun. It's like fun and games. You look for a property. Oh, this house is nice. Oh, this condo is nice. Oh, look. Oh, it's it's near the uh, the country club where you usually go to. By month nine, and you haven't found the real uh, property. That's already uh, irritating. <laughs> it's frustrating already. And um, what happens after that? Say, for example, you've already found one, or the wiser way to do it is you've already shortlisted at least three to five or three, for that matter, that you actually really like is um, to check on the due diligence. Of course, you're going to make an offer and you check the due diligence of the property because sometimes, um, well, this is an inevitable part of buying a property. You really have to go through, of course, the selling aspect, uh, the, lead, like the proper paperwork. So you check the title, the tax declaration, you check on the arrears, mortgages, any annotations or DNs that can make the property either a real asset or a liability for you. So you check on those and then you have a proper professional or legal counsel for that matter or a licensed professional fix uh check these things for you and then once everything's clear you can proceed with the purchase and when you say uh, going to, uh, to to a licensed professional mm -hmm. what are the questions i should be asking if i'm buying from a developer a broker agent or direct owner because there are different ways of being able to buy right Correct. That's correct. Um, okay. This is a bit of the tricky part because this would entail a bit of finesse or grace because it's like dating. No? You can't uh, go there and then I just ask some details about because uh, these are sensitive documents that you're asking for or uh, information as well. Um, if, for example, you're buying from a developer, it would be easier because uh, normally you're buying, um, it's, uh, it's a corporate setup. They're, they're buy, you're buying based on the availability, you have to ask that. The views, the floor plan, very important. The size of the property, access points. Uh, the size, by the way, affects a lot uh, of the price, the valuation of the property. And the views, if it's a condo or if it's a house and lot, you have to ask the lot area and the floor area of the property. Finishes um, in the process of what you'll have to go through. So it's more of a... Um, uh, let's say a formal setup when it comes to buying from a developer. When you're buying from a secondary market from an individual, of course, you have to be more careful. You can't just go asking, oh, are you married? Are you null? <laughs> how many how many spots have you had in the past? Is there, is there someone gaming on this property? You can't go barge in the first viewing and ask those questions, right? But mm -hmm. there's a timing for these things later on when it's necessary to, not necessarily entirely, but... Uh, there's a right way to ask for the proper documents when you're conducting the due diligence. But basically, uh, maybe the first few things that you can ask is how old is the property? Why is it for sale? How big is the lot area, the floor area, and the paperwork? If you're interested in this, uh, would you have the proper titles? Of course, is it with you? Uh, is it under a personal property or corporation? And all of those other things could follow. But essentially, I think the most basic you have to ask for the size because that really affects the price uh, greatly. That's a that's a big that's a multiplier essentially for all of the real estate transactions. So uh, lot size for properties. If you have a house, lot size and floor area. It's a condo floor area. Thank you. And um, what about 
of the broker agent? Oh, for the broker, of course, um, number one, you have to deal with a professional. Uh, essentially, um, there are licensed brokers that are supposed to be offering these properties for, for sale. And there's also a, there are also basic things that they have to know. Apart from their negotiation skills, uh, they also have to know the basic things that uh, you should be asking them, like the lot size, the floor area, the access points, the commercial areas that are near. And of course, as you progress, you can ask more about the due diligence documents, about the title, tax declaration, and normally that happens after an offer has been accepted. So those are things that you can actually have. Uh, those are things that you can actually ask your uh, broker. Thank you very much. And you mentioned how important it was previously to see it physically, the property. What would be the process if I would like to buy property in the Philippines from overseas? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, it's also a very timely one. Um, in the past, before Zoom and the speedy calls are done, um, people would normally send uh, a representative to check out the property on their behalf. And whatever they say, that would be it. That's like a final <laughs> thing. Essentially, the representative deciding for them it's a trusted friend or a trusted relative for that matter but nowadays you can also do that so that they can confirm whatever you're showing uh, through the broker or through the owner who you're buying it from and at the same time while the representative is there uh, you can also initiate a video call so that you can see the property i would say it's very important to see it um, as well because um, sometimes even if the there's good intent in showing the you know, the property for what it is. Sometimes it's the interpretation as well, or probably, um, let's say, um, the resolution of the uh, gadget that they use is not nice. They can't see how nice the property is. You know, things like that. Or there are other things. Um, or say, for example, the photo of the lot doesn't show the surrounding areas because um, or because they were thinking of selling the lot, so they took a photo of the lot. But again, the buyer has different ideas of what they prefer in the house. So it wasn't intended to, to hide information but it's just that they had different directions where they're going so that i would say it's important to do it um one way or another if you're abroad uh, i would recommend if you can send somebody to check it out for you if you want to execute a video call to check it sure why not check the actual site also ask for the access points uh, nearest exits uh, road networks that are being built or that are existing and also of course uh, very important for me are the locators schools commercial Bands, all of those things. And usually, where do I go to get sound advice about buying property? Well, I'm here always. <laughs> That's why. But aside from that, um, just kidding. Um, if you want, um, you can also all. If you want, you can always consult a professional licensed broker or a consultant for that matter, because uh, they would normally know more about the legal aspect of selling the property and also the market values as to how much the property is really selling for in a particular area. Because uh, normally we would rely on, on, on trust circles around us, uh, but sometimes the information there may be right or sometimes they may be, may be wrong. We can't trust, uh, let's say for example, country club do more on these things. And that's why there are professionals really doing this to give you more accurate and, or rather precise advice as to the market values, what do you sell there, how much per square meter is it in one area. Because say for example, um, just to give you a quick idea, in a certain city, uh, what if a global city, to be very specific, you just move one block, if it's a different condo, it has a very different price per square meter. So the same one bedroom would have a very different price on a certain building compared to another one. And if somebody would come up and tell you, oh, uh, the price of, a certain property there is only like this, and then you're looking at the property which is highly expensive. You might have the wrong impression that somebody's, uh, you know, scamming or tricking you. But uh, for all you know, it could be the correct market value because of the quality of the building and the finishes and the delivery that comes with the, the whole uh, development. So these are very important things to check. Thank you. I mean, it is one of the biggest and most expensive decisions you'll make in a lifetime, right? So it's important to seek professional help regarding this. Mm -hmm. and, and let's say, okay, so I've seeked help. Um, I'm there. I found my property. 
what's next after I buy my property? What do I need to prepare for in terms of after sales? I see. Well, assuming that you were able to go to the site, check out the property, find something you like, made an offer, successfully it was accepted, you've drafted the contracts uh, perfectly and then the payments were made and you already paid the taxes, the transfer fees, all of these things. Now you have to think about the move-in costs because there are some move-in costs involved with uh, purchasing property. See, for example, there are other communities that actually charge a membership fee so that you can get into the village association. Apart from that, there are also other turnover costs. Say, for example, when you have to have the electricity connected, of course, to power the house or the property. And of course, after moving in, you have to worry about maintenance costs. Because um, nothing um, that's ever beautiful comes without any type of maintenance. Say, for example, it's a condo, there are monthly maintenance dues. If it's a uh, community, a subdivision, or a community for that matter, there are also associations that are associated with maintaining the property and keeping it in top shape. That's so helpful. That's the great advice because really that will determine the after sales, after the maintenance, whether you would like to get a townhouse, a house, or a condo. That's it right. Takes a lot. Thank you so much, Julius. That advice is wonderful because the after sales, the maintenance will really determine whether you can handle a house, a townhouse or a condo. And all of it was just wonderful advice. It's a lot to take in. We learned so much. And with that, any final words for our viewers today so that they won't be overwhelmed when it comes to buying their first property? Well, I know it's a lot to take in when it comes to buying properties. It's it's also fair to say that it's also quite confusing because this is one of the biggest purchases one would ever make in one's own life. And it's also a life-changing uh, purchase. So with that, um, contrary to some notion that we usually have here locally, I would say that instead of starting with a budget, buying property more over than buying mortars and bricks is actually choosing a lifestyle. And choosing a lifestyle would be definitely the most important thing that you have to think about before choosing a property that's, that best fits you. I love that lifestyle. That is so important. Thank you so much, Julius, for enlightening our viewers, all of us, about the right steps to take when purchasing and protecting our property investments. I learned how important lifestyle is, right? It's a key factor in choosing your own home. But that's just me. Check out the key takeaways from this session with Julius de la Cruz. Julius, before we let you go, where can we find you or get in touch with you? Website or social media pages? Any upcoming events? So there are several areas where you can actually get in touch with us. If your concern is about title transfer, you can reach out to us via our website. It's conveyance.com.ph. That particular company also has its own Facebook page you can follow. We also have our own brokerage website. So it's remaxunlimited.ph. You can also reach me there. Or if you want to see more of what I do, what properties that are available in the market and the ones that we feature, you can follow us on Instagram or in YouTube by our page, Live Here PH. Thank you once again, Julius, for gracing this session today. I think we are more than ready and fully equipped to go after our home goals after this talk. Now, there's still more coming up, so make sure you go through the Carousel Property Expo and enjoy the different activities and topics in store for you today. Don't miss out on other webinars happening all throughout the week. And if you're looking for your dream home, you may browse through Carousel Property to find the widest selection of properties to choose from that will satisfy every person's needs and budget. In Carousel Property, there's every type of home for every type of person. I'm Anne Gauthier. It's been a pleasure being with you. Stay safe, everyone, and looking forward to seeing you in the next webinar.